All righty. Hello and welcome to our virtual public input session for a public participation policy and language access plan. My name is Lisa Heron and I'm a community outreach and engagement specialist with the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. Um, we're really happy to have you here. And uh, before we get started, I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping slides and then pass it over to Regina Strong from the Office of the Environmental Justice Public Advocate. Sorry, folks. There we go. Um, just a reminder, all lines are muted during the meeting, and we are recording this meeting. We'll send out the slides as well as the recording, along with other resources uh, within the next week. And as we go through this session, we'll be answering questions which are written into the Q&A box. Um, and please feel free to also click the hand icon at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to ask any questions or make a comment. And for those folks that are on the phone, there will be an opportunity to ask a question. And if you'd like to do that via phone, you're gonna wanna click pound two. And we'll reiterate this when we get to the discussion portion of the night. So, or of the day, I guess. Uh, so how will things work? Um, so today we're going to do a short presentation on both the public participation policy draft as well as the update to the language access plan. And then we'll move into a more open style discussion and comment period. Uh, we'll, start, we'll start with that brief presentation and ground the conversation and questions and comments will be together. So right now we have about 30 people on the call and we're hoping for a robust discussion. And everything will be considered as part of the record until the comment period ends April 1st. And with that, I'll turn it over to Regina Strong, environmental justice public advocate. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us and learning more about the public participation policy and, and language access plan. We're gonna give you an opportunity, as Lisa said, to give us comments, but first we're gonna talk a little bit about both plans. Next slide, please. So um, like I started to talk about, this is just kind of the agenda of how this will work. We wanna make sure we give you a high level overview of the background, the timeline, um, what's in the updated public participation policy, um, and language access plan, and then have an opportunity for discussions, how to submit an official comment and where to find additional information. So we're gonna try to give you as much information in this session as possible to provide feedback. Next slide. So like Lisa said, I am the Regina Strong, I'm the environmental justice public advocate. The team in our office includes Katie Lambeth, who you'll hear from shortly, as well as Kate Hutchins, who is kind of working in the back, putting some things uh, in the chat, providing you know answers to questions. So she's kind of in the background of this. And Lisa Heron, who you just met, who's our community outreach specialist. So you'll hear from all of us today. And um, Jim Esklowski is also part of our team. Okay, so, you know, our goal is to really talk about the updated public um, participation policy and to answer your questions. Um, our, in creating these, we really want to hear from folks, find out what you think, and find ways to, as much as possible, integrate your comments into how we move forward with both public participation, as well as ensuring equitable access through our language access plan. So the, the importance of uh, public participation to the work that EGLE does or the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, um, it's really all about ensuring from the public participation perspective that folks have equitable access and an opportunity to meaningful engage in the ways that we reach out. So every situation is different. Each opportunity may be linked to a different action by the agency, but we wanna make sure folks 
who could potentially be impacted or have an interest in it really have an opportunity. So for everyone across the state, no matter where you live or who you are, you have an opportunity to share with us um, related to the decisions that could potentially impact you, the environment or your health. Next slide. So by way of background, in, in 2019, our office, the Office of the Environmental Justice Public Advocate was created. And in 2020, um, our office took a look at EGLE's existing policy for public participation and updated, did an updated version, which we um, shared at that time, as well as develop EGLE's first limited English proficiency plan, which is now called our language access plan. And both policies, um, both the policy and the plan um, at that time were available in English, Arabic, and Spanish. And current, our current versions are as well that have been updated. And so you have an opportunity to make comments on those and we'll continue to stress that. That's why we're talking today. Um, just, it, you know, we'll talk more about like the timeline um, of when you can, you know, submit comments by, but I encourage you to let us know what you think. Next slide. Here's the timeline. So, um, the opportunity for comments is open for the next several weeks up until April 1st. So you have an opportunity to submit written comments um, and as well as participate in these sessions. The virtual sessions, this one, and our second session, which will take place on Thursday um, at six o'clock this Thursday, at six o'clock at seven, we'll also have um, simultaneous translation in Spanish and Arabic. So the other aspect that I wanted to share is that as we get those comments and once that deadline passes, we'll take a look at the comments and we will have a response to comments and ultimately put the final policies out. Our goal is to have them out this spring. So I think it's time for us to get into what's in this public participation policy. So I am going to hand things over to uh, Lisa Heron, and she's going to give you more details. All right, Lisa, you're up. Great. Thanks so much, Regina. Um, so as Regina said, we have our new draft public participation policy that's out, and it's gone through an extensive internal review process. But essentially, the policy provides a framework and outlines steps and mechanisms for EGLE to consider once it's determined that an agency action will include an opportunity for the public to participate. And so what we mean by agency action, it's really anything that we are doing as, a, as an agency, whether it's regulations and rulemaking, it's in the permitting process, it's through project or plan approval. Some of you might know of the My Healthy Climate Plan or things like that and have participated in input sessions around that more recently. Um, significance compliance action, so that includes enforcement cases and things like that, or the development of key eco initiatives and programs that have funding affiliated with it. Um, so it's a pretty broad framework and it covers the entire, uh, the entire agency across divisions and offices. Um, Slide. So some actions are required by laws and rules to involve the public, and, and those are, are division specific and, and very clear, clear within the rules and regulations. And for those actions, there must be at least a certain amount of opportunity for the public to participate. So this in, may include a public notice that needs to be in the newspaper of record or needs to be posted to our web page or the calendar, things of that nature. And just as far as key changes go, I'm going to go through a few, and some of these might be familiar, but um, as far as the policy goes, it's a completely reorganized and almost rewritten document, and that internal review process really gave us time for reflection, and it follows each step in the public participation process from planning ahead and what kinds of things we need to prepare to what it's like when we make decisions and how we inform the public and following up afterward. What does it look like to keep working with community partners and with community members and stakeholders? We also have expanded key terms and definitions. I think the one from 2020 might've had one definition and this one's got 
probably over 10. So it includes more explanation for words that we use a lot, like environmental justice, meaningful involvement, and plain language to make sure that everyone understands them both internally at Eagle as well as, as the public itself. Um, it also highlights best practices for engagement. So we really try to line it up so that the lens through which we approach our public engagement has an environmental justice lens, meaningful involvement, and really considers things like accessibility through which we approach our outreach, um, whether it's required by regulation or it's something that we have written into a program or a grant. Um, the other piece is that we have considerations and minimum requirements for meetings. So we give clear rules on the different types of meetings that we have, whether it's online, in person, or a mix of both, and, and what kind of meeting they are. Is it a public hearing? Is it a really formal process? Um, is it more informal listening session? Uh, those kinds of things are, are included and built out within the policy itself. And in addition, we also have strength and continuous improvement and account accountability section. So this is where my role and OEJPA, uh, the Office of, Envi of the Environmental Justice Public Advocate are involved. You know, we're forming a group that includes different parts of the agency. So representatives from across the divisions that are working together to make sure that the policy is working well and ensuring that we have regular training and look at the policy to see if changes need to be made. Um, and I think that that is it for the policy section of things. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Katie Lambeth, our tribal liaison and environmental justice liaison. And thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. So I'm gonna get into our language access plan. So Eagle's language access plan provides a framework for Eagle staff to ensure meaningful access to limited English proficient individuals. Um, that is a mouthful to say. So um, moving forward, I'm just going to refer to it as LEP individuals. Uh, in the plan, we do define what we mean by LEP individuals, which are those who do not speak English as their primary language or have limited ability to read, write, speak, or understand English. This plan provides a four-factor analysis to proactively determine the need for language services. So for factor one, we examine the number or propor proportion of LEP individuals to be served or encountered as part of an EGLE action. So the greater the number or proportion of those individuals, the more likely language services will be needed. As part of this, EGLE considers the geographic scope of the action when determining the number or proportion of LEP individuals likely to be encountered or impacted. Uh, identification of LEP populations uh, can be accomplished by examining census data, uh, using tools like uh, EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency's Environmental Justice Screening Tool, uh, referred to as EJ Screen, or Michigan's Environmental Justice Screening Tool, my EJ Screen. In addition, um, we can find out information by contacting Eagle District staff, local government agencies, community-based organizations, community members, and others who have a real knowledge on the ground of uh, potential language ac access needs. For factor two, we look at the need for enhanced language services based on the frequency of contact with the language group, the census data regarding lang languages spoken in a geographic area, how often we encounter LEP individuals and they seek services and the type of language services needed. For factor three, EGLE considers the importance or urgency of the action undertaken. So the more important or urgent the service, the greater the need to provide those enhanced uh, language services. Factor four, EGLE considers the level of resources and cost to provide those language access services. As part of the plan developed in 2020, we began monitoring our language access services, including information on language services requested and provided, the languages that are requested and provided, the purpose, who the target audience is, or the location of those services, the cost, and whether we had staff help with uh, reviewing translated documents, and then also challenges encountered and how they were resolved. So on this slide, you can see some of the data that we have since we began monitoring in August of 2020. Um, 
And I just want to mention, uh, for example, the first for the first time last year, we started providing simultaneous interpretation at a couple of meetings. Uh, we will be providing the service again tomorrow for our evening session uh, in Arabic, Spanish, and American Sign Language, as we mentioned previously. So if you know of people who would benefit from those services, please feel free to share those with um, share the information with your networks. We'd really appreciate that. So in terms of key changes, we didn't change a lot on our language access plan. When we developed it in 2020, we did put it out for a 60-day public comment period. Uh, the key changes were uh, changing the title, as was already mentioned by Regina, and then we did update the U.S. Census Bureau data, which is what we really rely on to identify those language access needs. So now I will pass things back over to Lisa. She's gonna remind folks how to ask questions or make a comment, and then we're gonna get into the discussion portion of today's session. Yeah, thanks so much, Katie. Um, so that uh, concludes the rest of our, our presentation. And as a reminder, you can use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to either put in questions um, that we can answer verbally, or you're welcome to put comments in there as well. And um, just so people know, there's about 54 folks on the call. So really hoping that some of you guys can raise your hands or ask questions. But um, to ask a question verbally, you click the hand icon at the bottom of your screen and we will um, address you in the order that your hand is raised. And if you're on the phone calling in, you can type pound two into your phone and we'll be able to see your hand raise and unmute unmute you when the time comes. Um, and just like a reminder is just be mindful of other participants. There's a, we're putting a three minute maximum for comments and, and questions just so that we can get to all of them. And the comments and questions are part of the official record and will be considered just part of the update to the public participation policy and language access plan. And uh, attendees will will call upon you in the order that requests are received. But um, for now, the the floor is open, and we're we're happy to answer things as as we move forward. Um, okay, it looks like right now we have Samuel. Yeah, Sam Karski, your hand is raised. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, and you can go ahead. Hey there, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, I just thank you so much for all of the Eagle staff going through this. I've been going through this policy also very, very, very closely. And there's lots I could say, but I'll keep it short since we're submitting official comments soon. Um, one biggest thing I have is with the language access plan is I really want and should be able to see plain language included into that plan for language access. I think that is a very critical aspect to have um, and just following principles of plain language that are can be found in many different sources. The federal government even has some principles to follow. Um, I think that is just one key area that's missing in the language access plan. I would like to see that um, highlighted more. Um, I think that plan right now is really good for limited English speakers, but um, general literacy levels across the nation in Michigan are in particular pretty low. Um, so I think plain language can be an excellent resource and tool to help address some of those gaps. Um, and that's it for now. Thank you for that suggestion and raising that. Thank you so much. Um, the next person that we have is Kristen, and, and forgive me if I mispronounce your last name, but hey, hey Xian. or she disappeared. <laughs> All right, never mind. Well, I know that there's going to be some more comments. Typically, we give it a couple of minutes for folks to be able to put questions in the chat or or say anything on verbally we're happy to to answer any sort of questions okay we've got someone uh I knew we'd have another okay so we're gonna go with connie boris i'm gonna unmute you uh 
Ani, can you unmute? There we go. Ani, you should be able to talk. Yeah, I, um, wait a minute. Uh, oh, we can hear you. Oh, you can hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, we got there. All right, good. The, the main issue uh, that we face in reviewing wetland destruction permit applications in Wayne County is that you, we're only allowed 20 days. You have, so we have 20 days sometimes to review maybe 500 pages or more of documents, plus a lot of drawings, plus we need to see the site and we can't get access to the site. So we feel that EGLE, in particular, the Water Resources Division, does not allow enough time or access to a site to provide meaningful public participation on a permit application. So I just want to make that comment, and I would really love to see that addressed because it's it's very frustrating. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Connie. And we will definitely make sure that comment um, is is shared with our our folks in water resources. So thank you for that. Okay, um, it looks like we have Kristen Heishian. I I'm I'm gonna unmute you and hopefully this works this time. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Great. Um, yeah, I'm it's, sorry it's, if I no, it's your okay. okay. It's difficult. It's high tie in, but thank you. Um, so I just want to say first, thank you for including these new def the expanded definitions, especially equity, environmental justice, and meaningful involvement. Um, it's just so great to see these concepts really taking a permanent place in, in our policy and our discussions. Um, I do have concerns, though, with the current definitions of environmental justice and meaningful involvement, um, especially compared to the U.S. EPA's official definitions. Um, the, so, and as a primacy agency of the EPA, I really do feel like there needs to be more alignment in terms of, um, especially environmental justice, which as written, I feel only really speaks to just equity and it doesn't really it doesn't account for the um, the cumulative impacts, the disproportionate impacts that can that impact these communities. And so I would really encourage um, you all to, to revisit those definitions um, and 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 make them um, more accurate and true to their intended meanings. So um, thank you so much. Thanks for that feedback, Kristen. Um, I know that our definition of environmental justice that we use is based on the EPA um, definition, although we worked across with our Michigan Advisory Council on Environmental Justice or the Mackey J, as well as across state government as part of our interagency environmental justice response team. Um, to integrate other elements into it, but it's it's pretty close. Um, but there may be other elements, and I hear you on within that definition, the direct addressing of um, things like disparate impact and other things. So thank you for sharing that. We'll add that to our comments, and we'll we'll work to you know give you more direct feedback on that. So just wanted to say thanks. Thank you. And we're we're still kind of waiting for any questions and answers in the in the QA box. And folks are able to raise their hand. As a reminder, if you're on the phone, you can press pound two. Lisa, as we're waiting for some additional questions or comments and folks raising their hand, uh, I'd be happy to go through um, kind of our next steps for this and see if we get some additional. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll, I'll share my screen.
Yeah, so in terms of next steps, um, the slides for this listening session, as well as the recording of today's session, will be sent out to all registrants, and we will be posting it on our website. Um, and also a reminder that the public comment period is open until April 1st of this year. And all the comments that we receive will be considered as we finalize the plan and policy, including those we re re received today and tomorrow as part of our listening sessions, as well as those received through other mechanisms, which I'll touch on in the next slide. So we anticipate that the final policy or plan will be released spring, summer of this year, and we'll also be uh, providing a response to comments document so you can see how your response were considered in our final plan and policy. So um, in addition to the listening sessions, we have several other ways to submit an official comment, um, including by mail. And uh, do we have folks that are calling in? Did you notice? No, okay. Well, I won't read, I won't bore you all by reading the, the mailing address if we don't have folks calling in. Um, we also have the opportunity, to, um, you, you have the opportunity to submit comments through our email address. So that's engage slash eagle slash engage at michigan.gov. And we have a call in number where you can leave a message or a comment by a voice message. So all this information too, you can find on the michigan.gov slash engage with Eagle website, um, as well as um, some of the other websites that we've been putting in the chat. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of this information you can find on our website. So the updated drafts um, of the policy and plan, the translated versions, as well as our previous versions, the 2020 versions, if you're interested in looking at you know, a comparison of how things have changed as well as links to the meetings and recordings. And then if you do think of any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to Lisa and I, both of our contact information are here. Otherwise you can uh, reach out with questions to our general Office of Environmental Justice Public Advocate email address. And then we have our, um, Eagle Engage address, which is where we are, where if you are submitting a formal comment, uh, official comment for the record, please use that email address. But if you just have any clarifying questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. That's all of the kind of next steps and follow up. Um, looks like we do have uh, some additional questions, so. Alrighty, um, so Kristen had a follow up question. And I think it's a good one for the purposes of an agency-wide policy, but is there a reason why this policy is not required, but rather just a framework? Requiring it would assure the public that these will be consistently implemented by all staff across divisions and increase transparency. Regina, did you want to take that one or? I was going to say, Katie, either way, one, one of the things I will say, it is a policy, which means it's a department-wide policy. And because we've done it as a framework, because each division's regulatory framework is different, certain things they're required to do that may differ from other um, divisions in terms of how they would implement. So it's a broad enough policy, but it is determined um, essentially how it's carried out in a case-by-case -case basis based on the regulatory framework. And Katie, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. No, I mean, I think that that is, you know, because it is a department-wide policy, we have to make sure that um, it is going to work with all of our programs. Um, so we wanted to provide that framework for folks to use, um, given that we know that there's dif differing uh, resources, there's differing requirements across the department. Same thing with our language access plan. Um, it is a department-wide policy, so we wanted to make it flexible enough that it could apply across the entire department. Thanks so much for your question. Um, I, uh, there, we have a question from an anonymous attendee regarding evaluation. So the exact question is, is there a section for evaluating the policy? I see the continuous improvement section and the public participation section, but it is missing specific evaluation metrics that will be measured. 
it's okay you're regina feel free to jump in. yeah lisa and you may have you may have something to add to this as well but lisa mentioned that we're developing an internal community engagement work group that has representative from all of our divisions and offices. And as part of that work, that's exactly what we're looking at in terms of how are we evaluating this work? Um, we may even be developing metrics so that we can start measuring this and how we're, you know, what progress we're making. So that definitely is incorporated into this. Um, it is something that we're hoping to do as part of the continuous improvement. Yeah. And I think I'll, I'll just add that if there are specific metrics that you would like for us to consider, it would be really important to include that in a comment. I think we're going to be bringing folks from across the divisions together to really look at the response to comments and, and develop a consensus. And I think personally, for my position as community outreach and engagement specialist, that part is really important, but we would love to hear what kind of metrics would be meaningful to both community partners as well as the general public um, beyond beyond reach. I think like we're also interested in what the quality of engagement looks like. So thank you so much for that question. Um, okay, and then we have Rasheem Gordon just stating, oh, I have invaluable information and, and thank you all within the questions and answers given. Um, and then Kristen, let's see here. Yeah, okay, so something helpful for us to understand is divisional direct uh, decision making would be publishing clear criteria for each legal division's public input decision making in a centralized location, like on the outreach or community learning series web pages. Um, that's an excellent comment, and I think it's something that, that Katie and Regina touched on that we're going to hope to do. But if you guys want to expand upon that, otherwise, I can move to the next question. Yeah, I'll just say, Kristen, your your comment, um, just in terms of the follow up to your question made me it triggered for me that we are also encouraging our divisions to develop specific policies to implement this department wide policy in a way that works for their programs and offices. So for instance, our air quality division does have a their own public participation policy. So that is something that we're um, encouraging as well as our office and Lisa and her position in our environmental support division are able to help with. I know there are two hands that are up, Lisa. Did you see those? Oh, great. Thank you for flagging that. Yeah, let's go over to that and then we'll get back to the Q&A. Um, okay. So it looks like we have Ching Ming. I'm going to unmute you. And if you'd like to give a comment, you can go ahead. You should can be you unmuted. Hear me? Hello, yep. can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, well, thank you so much. It's a great honor, um, especially for Regina and Lisa and Kate. I have quite a lot of questions, but I want to first uh, echo the previous lady about the time and timing I put in the Q&A, uh, time is very, very short. For those people who, especially not very familiar with computer, you cannot finish quite a lot of things in such a short time. And especially for the like low income, disadvantaged people, they just cannot even get into the wagon. Wagon drives so fast. This number one, please consider about that. Secondly, is that the phone call I gave to Eagle in regarding quite a lot of things and hardly get any back. My question first immediate is the survey, and I almost finished 90%, but it was extended January 31st because of touch so many things. We cannot just simply submit it and let you guys help to continue finish. Therefore, I really want to know, for that, do we have a deadline? Or if I couldn't finish, can I just submit it to you so you can look the scope, the, the questions, uh, instead of what you wait for the call, which nobody called back. Uh, by the way, my name is Cheng Ming Fan from Tiny Light World. And we are very active to support MHCP 
and I really appreciate your great leadership is doing very, very good. But I found both the schools and also local government, like a Celine district, uh, Celine city, hardly anybody even notice or pay attention of governor's MHCP. And then why is that? Another thing is I'm university alumni. I submit the to the department I got it, degree, civil engineering and the environment. They ask them if I collaborate. They politely reject. So obviously the government from Lansing with local the gaps and the government with the university there's a gap. Governor Whitmer gave one million dollars to the University of Michigan entrepreneur. How what is the response? So I just really want to stop right here and thank you so much. You guys are great. And anything I can do for you, especially for the translation to Chinese, and it's very important. Huge amount of Chinese never heard about it, even they know that they but they want to help. The, the, and, and also want to join in. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, all of that feedback. Um, I believe when you talk about the survey, you're talking about the Community Change Grant Survey. I think that is the one survey that our office had out and about. Is that the one you're referring to? I'm going to assume that's correct um, because I... It, you can still submit those, and if you need help, please email that um, eagle dash environmental justice um, at michigan.gov. Um, did I do the email right? I think I did the email right. Um, email us there, or um, strongr1 at michigan.gov is my email address, and we'll try. We'll help you get through that survey um, and be able to support and assist. And I know that is part of our Michigan Healthy Climate Plan um, kind of support that we're providing as it relates to ensuring and supporting um, Michigan applications for that EPA grant. So, you know, we'd be happy to follow up with you. And thank you so much for your question and comment. All right, great. Uh, and Kate just put the email in, um, but I think I heard a, also a question about a deadline for this particular opportunity, mm -hmm. and that that would be April first. Um, so we've got another couple of weeks or about a month left. Um, I'm going to go over to the Q and A, and then I'll go back to hands that might have been raised. But Richard, uh, Mika, how will you describe complex issues such as Tosca related matters? So I think what you mean is the Toxic Substances Control Act. Um, and so I guess this is a specific regulatory question. How are we considering that within public participation? Yeah, I don't think we'd be able to specific, specifically talk about specific program just because we don't have uh, program staff on the call today. But if you want to reach out, we can um, maybe re reach out to our program staff and help get an answer for you on that. Yeah, and I think the point earlier is that this is really meant to be a division-wide policy, and there are certain divisions that have more relationship with that particular act, whereas air quality might be the Clean Air Act or water quality is the Water Quality Act, so we're kind of considering you know, these very large complex issues, but that that has to go into division specific guidance. Um, we have another question from Gregory Eagle saying, policy is normally followed by procedures. Are procedural documents planned? Maybe, Katie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can, I can touch on this and Lisa, you probably have some to add as well. I think part of what we're doing here, the public participation policy and language access plan are part of a larger um, consideration of community engagement across, you know, our department and our engagement with communities. So we are hoping to provide more guidance documents, more templates, more examples for staff to use to be more effective. 
Um, but we also are interested in it in hearing, you know, from communities and from the public of, you know, what what are what policies and pro and procedures are helpful, what what is working well, maybe what isn't working well, where we need to work on those issues. But we're definitely looking at providing additional guidelines around supporting our community engagement work as a whole. I don't really have anything to add to that beyond uh, agreed. I think that we, it's, it's a pretty complex thing to work across the divisions and that each one will have different procedures. And, and even underneath that, there's different rules or different processes that need to be followed based on whether it's a permit or an enforcement action or something like that. But a good question nonetheless, and, and something that that internal working group is really going to be considering because a lot of this is around consensus building internally as well. So thank you for your question. Um, I think I'm going to go over just to the folks on the call. It looks like we have T Tanya Kabbalah. I'm going to unmute you and you can go ahead and ask your question. Let's see. Should be. Yeah, there you go. Tanya, can you? You should be unmuted. All right, Tanya, you're able to talk, and if not, we'll just go move to the Q&A. Okay. All right, maybe we can try again soon, um, and we'll retry. Okay. So uh, we have another question from an anonymous attendee and some other comments, but I agree with the prior speaker about people having access to contribute or send in comments. Many people in Shiawassee County do not have a computer or good internet access to comment. Have you planned engagement with people at places they need to frequent, such as grocery stores or city halls? I think I would, you know, um... And Lisa and, and Katie can chime in on this. That's why every case is looked at really specifically. You know, one of the things Katie mentioned in her comments was around looking at both my EJ screen and other tools that can help you get a sense of the community from a broad standpoint, but nothing replaces the opportunity to hear from people specifically in communities. And so depending on what the action is and what folks are doing, you know, we we wholeheartedly agree that access is really important and you kind of have to go to where people are normally used to getting information. And so depending on the situation, there are a lot of, I, I, I think in it, for different divisions, um, there are opportunities more broadly to reach out and do exactly what you say and go where people are. Um, if there's not a lot of, you know, we, we, we in, encourage and work with all the divisions and programs as they have things out there, not to just throw things online, right? That's why we have this kind of policy. They're also in some regular regulations, requirements to post in certain places, you know, no, newspapers and others, but we know based on um, communities that we really, you know, want to reach, they may not have access to either. So on a case-by-case -case basis, we definitely encourage, and nothing can replace talking to the community and figuring out where people get their information. Um, so I'll, and Katie, I don't know, or Lisa, if you want to add anything to that. I mean, I think that pretty much covers it. I, I'll just highlight too, that we are trying to provide as many ways to submit comments um, as possible. So for even for our virtual sessions, we have call in numbers where folks can come in by phone. Um, we have the opportunity for folks to just call in and leave a comment on a voicemail if, you know, mailing something in or submitting a comment through email um, is, is not a great option for them. So we're trying to provide as many ways as possible that folks can engage with us. Yeah, I think, I think for this particular opportunity, we've kind of covered the bases, but I think overall, just in terms of engagement, that we are hoping to broaden what our engagement looks like so that we are going to places where people already are or where it's additive and and folks are showing up to. So for instance, my team went to the state fair last year um, along with other 
other all sorts of different types of booths that were there and people were already there but we were passing out information and things like that and so we're really hoping to to increase those kinds of things um but sometimes it is a capacity issue and and what our programmatic staff are available to do so really appreciate that question and i think it's it's well taken especially the the lack of internet access and in certain parts of the state and um, something we definitely want to consider. Um, and I think that for the most part, we just have comments that are in the, the Q&A as of now. And so we're just gonna have those for the record, but it uh, looks like Gregory Eagle has another question and then we'll, then we'll move it over to the, to the phone. But Gregory, your question was, part of the EJ challenge is based upon the regulated community having significant influence on laws and rules, limitations on permit decision-making factors. Will the policy establish procedures to change adverse legislation to public impact? Uh, Regina or Katie, I think maybe Regina, you might want to answer that one. Yeah. So I think from, so this policy is meant to work in our existing framework, to be honest. And within this policy, we can't change that regulatory framework, um, but there absolutely are opportunities for the public to weigh in on what they'd like to see from that standpoint. Um, that is you typically, depending on which area you're talking about, either controlled by legislative action or from federal government action or congressional action. And so what, you know, in addition to this public participation policy, which is really about ensuring that folks who are working within their regulatory framework within the divisions, whether it's, you know, the air quality division or water resources are, we're trying to build some consistency and a policy across the department on how to address, um, and ensure equitable access and meaningful involvement for all. Um, this policy does not address, you know, the things in your question in terms of the regulatory um, framework, but those are things that would have to be changed at those legislative and, and federal government levels. So I'll just add that. I don't know, Katie, if you have anything to add there, but I think it is, it is an important part of the process for environmental justice to ensure that everyone has access to and the ability to comment and give us their feedback. Um, we're also just as an aside working um, now that Lisa's on board in having a department wide kind of community engagement policy that goes beyond because public participation policy is really focused on the regulatory framework, but how, what are the other ways that the department can engage with folks in communities and meet them where they are? So just wanted to flag that um, in response to the question. Great, and Katie, if you don't have anything to add, we're gonna try to get to the, to the phone line um, or to the, hands raised. We have three hands raised and, and Tanya, we're going to try again. Are you able to, Tanya Kabbalah, are you able to talk? Let's see. Ooh. All right. We can't hear you, but maybe we'll keep trying and we'll, we'll move to the next, next hand raise. And it looks like we have two more hands raised. It'll be Cheng Ming and then it will be Barb Reese. So I'm going to allow Cheng Ming, you should be able to. I can you hear me again? Yep. Yes, a great honor. I want to be sure, be clear. Uh, I put it in the q and a, this is the serious question. The funding support from Eagle from this program is geared to nonprofit organization. And we, Tiny Light World Inc. is a small company. We have another branch or arm is nonprofit. It is called a TLA, Tiny Light Art. But we did not have money. We didn't finish this registration. Regardless, we really want to help based on our technology developed since 1996, geared into the climate change and also support public domain. However, just 
want to know how we can help, regardless if we can get funding or not. And also, if we require some kind of funding to start with, can you help us to get in touch with tribal people and other minorities of Black people in Detroit called at the, I don't know if you guys pay attention of DFC, Detroit Future City. And I really like to partner with them and also give our technology help, our technology to help the environment campaign. And this is a serious issue, but nobody answered our question when I call a couple of times. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cheng Ming. I know that we are, um, you know, we will definitely, you know, follow up. Uh, if you reach out to us, it's a, it's kind of a different issue that we're talking about right now. Um, but I appreciate you bringing it up and we will follow up with you. Um, if you can reach out to us via that number, um, I'm sorry, that email, and we can, we'll follow up because there probably are some things that we can maybe help make some connections on. So thank you for wanting to be part of that process. And those are EPA grants, but we're just trying to help folks in Michigan make the connections to be part of the queue because there's a lot of money coming from the federal government right now to support environmental justice efforts. So thank you for that. And we will follow up with you. Right. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the next person that we have, Barb Reese, I'm going to unmute you, um, ask to unmute. You should. Barb, are you able to? Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Great. All right. We keep mentioning each department has their own statutes within which they have to live. And I understand that we are told when we make suggestions for different actions for cleanup that we're told they have to work within the statutes. Could the statutes, could this be part of the policy that when our, our requests are limited by the statutes, could we request those statutes, chapter and verse, so that we as a citizens group can work on getting those statutes changed. Could that be part of this policy? Because I kept reading, um, not all of the public recommendations can be allowed because of the statutes under which they have to work. It would be nice to know what those statutes are so that we could work on them and see what could be due to what could we do to change them? For instance, I'll give you a for instance. We're working on a cleanup site within our township that has landfills. And we've requested that the landfills be removed as opposed to dig deed restrictions. Those are not satisfactory to us. You remove the, you remove the landfill and then you don't have to have the dig deed restriction. And we're told that they are limited by statutes. I don't know what statute would limit that, but we would like to know what those are. Is that possible to put in the framework? Because all of your divisions work within different statutes. Um, just give us the chapter and verse and we'll look it up and see what we can do to get that changed. Yeah, Barb, I think that's a, I mean, it's definitely a great point. I'm not sure it fits within the scope of our department-wide policy, but I would encourage you when you are engaging on some of these specific items to ask that question of Eagle staff because they should be able to provide you that answer. Um, but if, if it, it would be within your po public participation policy framework, it wouldn't matter what the statutes are. If that would just be a part of the, the procedure, part of the framework for policy, that of course, we're gonna say we can't do this because we're limited by the statutes and the statutes are this. It would seem to be a natural flow in there. Well, because we can we, definitely take we, that suggestion. We have asked and um, 
I, I would like our goal for this particular cleanup project to be no deed restrictions. That's my goal. The rest of it will follow, the cleanup will follow to the no deed restriction standard. Seems simple to me, but I'm not in your position, so I don't know these things. But it seems logical to me that you would put that in your policy to say, if your considerations are denied, they are denied for the following list of statutes. Then we as a Citizens Action Committee can work on our lawmakers to see if that can be changed. Yeah, I will mention as part of, um, you know, after we, we receive comments on a particular action, part of the framework is to provide a response to comments document where if you do submit an official comment and it is something that can be considered that at least we're responding to those comments in a response to comment document. So mm -hmm. we're, we try to address, you know, the situation of the public when they do uh, participate in our processes and provide comments that there is feedback on how those are considered. So I will mention that that that's in the the, the framework. Thank you. And uh, Regina, I didn't know if you had anything to add, but no, Katie, Katie added what I was gonna say because I we 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 hear you, Barb, and we know how important it is to to understand the rules with which decisions are made. Um, and one of the things you you probably or hopefully heard mentioned earlier is as we go through these comments, we're planning to have representatives from every division um, mm -hmm. as part of that process. And so these are good um, recommendations. So thank you for that. And we're gonna, you will hear back from us in terms of as we put those comments out, um, you know, what might be possible. Cause I, I think it's an important, it's important what you raise. So thank you so much for raising it. That was it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Barb. Um, so as of now, we don't have any more hands raised and um, we have one, oh yeah, here we go. We have a question in the chat from Cynthia Gant Jordan. How will we know those ex internal reviewers or who those internal reviewers are and how the community can review them. So I'm, I'm assuming reviewing some of the comments and, and discussion that will take place internally. So I don't know if uh, Katie or Regina, if you wanna take or maybe split this question because they think we're in the process of developing what this review, internal review and response to comments will look like because this is a very unique um, policy. Yeah. yeah, in terms of who's going to be on that team, um, we've reached out to each of our divisions and offices for them to identify who best um, in their divisions and offices would be able to contribute to this. So that is a process that we're undertaking right now, as Lisa mentioned. But in terms of, you know, the review of this policy and plan, we are planning to release a response to comments document. So if you have specific suggestions and comments that you want considered, um, we will be able to respond to those in that document when we finalize those policies and plans. So hopefully uh, that that's helpful and helps answer your question. Thank you so much for that question. And I think Tanya was able to put in the chat and just because we weren't able to to hear from her, um, we'll just put this, uh, I'm gonna say her comment directly out loud. And it's, I think if Eagle wants to truly honor and respect the public and their interest and time spent on issues and their communities they care about, there is more that can be done. Um, for example, reinstating the public ombudsman that was in place decades ago to provide assistance to citizens. Also the statewide public advisory council on areas of concern is an excellent model for public participation. Um, yes, agreed. <laughs> uh, but Katie or Regina, I think, I don't know if you guys have any familiar with the ombudsman process or if that's something that we can reply to. Um, okay. I don't, but it's definitely something we can look into. Yeah. And I think, you know, from an environmental justice standpoint, our office um, we do accept concerns um, and there is a concern process. There are also several lines. I don't know if um, 
Kay can pop those in the chat. If folks have specific concerns, they want to make sure get to you the specific um, divisions. You know, we focus primarily on, on specific environmental justice concerns, but anything that comes to our office, we also pass through our other EGLE lines that address concerns as they come through. Because um, I think it's really important to your point about an ombudsman type process for people to be able to share their concerns in a variety of ways. So we'll make sure we get the, that information um, shared. And our uh, it's also available on our page, which is michigan.gov slash environmental justice. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. And we have we have time for more comments and questions and just kind of want to leave, leave it open at least for a little bit. And I think, I don't know, Katie, if we should bring up the the slides that just have how to how to give a comment and our contact information again. And um, and then we can we can close out, but we'll keep an eye on for hands raised. There's, you know, people dropping off, I think, at the hour, about 40 people left and and um, just really appreciate folks' engagement. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and Katie, we can go over those last, how to submit a public comment again. Let me share my screen. And here we go. Should be able to see it, I think. Oh, there we go. All right, yep, it's up now. So just a reminder, we do have one more listening session tomorrow evening at six o'clock. So um, if you had time to ponder what we talked about today and you want to join that session and provide a comment there, you can do that. But also you have until April 1st to submit comments in all of these other capacities, which includes through mail, through our email address, and by calling our voicemail system. So please, um, as you're learned about both the plan and policy today. If you wanted to take a closer look and give us more detailed comments, we really encourage you to do that. Um, you know, I think it's important not only to address, you know, what issues aren't included in the policy, but if there are things that you think are particularly important, um, you know, just mentioning those as well to help support uh, the framework and the policy as well. So we would also appreciate those types of comments. Um, and then just a reminder in terms of where you can find further information and or how you can contact us with further questions, Lisa, if you want to pop those up. Yep. So again, here's our contact information. Um, if you have specific questions about the policy or the plan uh, that you want clarification on, please reach out to Lisa and I. Otherwise, we do have um, both our general addresses. So if you have particular issues that you want to raise to our Office of Environmental Justice Public Advocate, we have that general address. And then our Eagle Engage address, that is where if you want to submit an official comment through email that uh, we are accepting those. And Regina mentioned earlier these other um, uh, kind of the other things that we have available. So this pollution pollution emergency number down below. If there is a, you know, emer emergency issue or something that um, is time sensitive, that line is available 24 seven. So if you have a concern or a complaint or an issue, you can call that line. We also have an environmental assistance center. Um, so that uh, is like just general program questions, uh, program specific questions, they should be able to help direct you to the right person to talk to about those. And Kate shared the information for um, the Assistance Center in the chat as well. Yep. All right. So with that, that that's going to conclude our session. We don't have any more um, questions in the chat, and we've closed out on, on hands raised. We really appreciate your attention and the willingness to engage with us on this really important topic. And with that, um, we'll close it out. And, and Jim, can you can you end the webinar? I've got too many screens open, but really appreciate it, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.